here's a oh, our kid our kid they're rolling in guys all right guys i've got something in my cooler that's pretty exciting to me um there's a moth that we're gonna try to breed and get eggs from that i haven't bred in a long time it's been about 25 years since the last time i have bred this a very cool arteid moth i'm gonna set these guys up in a container and we are gonna breed the scarlet oh wait a minute i already have eggs guys look at this look at that i've got eggs already guys there's oh my gosh look at that there's 30 oh there's more 40 45 50 is there more oh there's more up on the lid there's another oh my gosh look at this so okay we've got at least 65 70 eggs here already um now i have to admit something i've kind of failed on this one it could be this thing that's laying eggs uh, I don't know which one it is because I have them both in the same container. That's a fail on my part. Okay. So what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to set them up in different containers and see which one continues to lay eggs and, uh, compare the eggs. And we're going to have to make sure that I have to, first of all, I have to find out what this thing eats and, uh, the caterpillar that is, and make sure that the eggs, when they hatch, they have host plant for both the, the hemp and whatever that thing is. And we're going to see if we can figure that out and raise whatever eggs these are. So pretty cool, man. Uh, we're going to get to this a little quandary, a mistake on my part for putting females of two different Arctead moths in the same container. And I'm not sure which eggs these are, but one, one way or another, we're going to get some cool larvae out of it. Okay. So it's been a few days since our Long Street Tussock Moth, I found out the name of it, Leucanoxus Lucano longa has laid a bunch of eggs and they've, I've discovered that they feed on grasses and I put a, a, a like a broad leafed grass that grows common in right down the street from my house and guess what guys, the caterpillars started hatching and they are, I'm sorry, they are tearing up the grass. So look at this. They are going to town. And what I'll try and do is I'll try and see so if I could pull a little bit of it out just so I can show you guys a nice clean, some nice clean images of the baby little first instar caterpillars here. Let's see how we, uh, how we do here. There we go. And this is quite interesting guys because they this one female moth laid a ton of eggs i mean there's a bunch of them in there and they're all hatching and they're all starting to eat so um i'm gonna submit that there is absolutely no way i'm gonna rear all these things in captivity so i'm probably gonna once the caterpillars get a little larger I'm going to go out and release some because I, we found these all the way down through the keys. So I didn't know what they eat down there, but they eat grasses. So there's plenty of different grass species down in the Florida Keys and they are going to town. So um, that's good stuff, guys. We've got plenty of life cycle action going and we're going to see about what this long streaked <laughs> tussock moth life cycle is all about here. Super exciting. All right, so we got some, I got some grass stems. I put them in a water cup, water fix, put them in this cup. Now the goal is I'm going to try to get these. Oh, they're not going to do it. The break. Shoot. I was hoping I would be able to kind of bend these in the container here. Hold on, hold on a second. Okay, this is not ideal, but I put some long pieces of grass and water picks in 
in order to fit them in the container, I had to bend them, which I'm sure that's not gonna really hold up. But I need to get these guys going because these little caterpillars are chewing like crazy and they're definitely outgrowing these little cups. And so now if we wanna take a look at my little tiger moth caterpillars, they're probably third in star already. I gave some to Ricky because I definitely didn't need all of these. Um, this thing laid a, this one female laid a bunch. So let me do something real quick here. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna transfer these caterpillars Let's take a good look at them first, though. Little dark colored caterpillars, little tubercles or hairs. They'll get more fuzzy as time goes, I'm sure. Um, but the goal is just to knock them off inside of the container and they'll, they'll kind of catapult down on their little silk strands. All you got to do is touch them. The Arctid caterpillars were notorious for just bungee jumping. So uh, I don't want to put decaying biomass in my new container because that would be counterproductive. All right, so another thing we can do is just... I, one of these days I'll figure out how to film with my phone and work with... <laughs> Only having two hands, I'll take my tweezers. I'm just going to knock them off. They'll catapult down. Okay. So, let's see. Anybody else? There's one there. Okay. I'm just gonna take a quick, quick look around the grass blade. I think we got them all. Yep. Let me toss you. And then, you know, you can see some of them fell into the little crack here on my lid. So that's just a matter of just dropping them onto there. And then I had a, a larger container here, which I'm going to open up as well. Actually, I actually still have a few in this cup. Yeah, there's a bunch of them in here, guys. We transferred them all. There's probably easy 30 or 40 of them in here. And so that'll be plenty to keep my hands full uh, and document the life cycle of this species. So they're in third instar. Probably got another week before they pupate, and we'll show you some full-grown caterpillars in the next clip. All right, so our little streaked, caterp streaked tussock caterpillars are growing nicely, eating the grass. They're turning black, and they're fuzzy. And you can see this guy's been chewing right there in fact, he's going to probably start chewing right in front of us. Pretty cool. I've, I've had him on several different types of grass. Oh, this one's got a little orange, orange hair is coming off the side, which is pretty. So these guys have been eating the grass. They're entering what I believe to be third or fourth in star. They're getting these little orange hairs on the side, which is pretty cool. And they're eating multiple different species of grass, so it looks like they're polyphagous. They're not. They're not super uh, picky about what grass they eat. All right, guys. I wanted to show you real quick. Uh, the I believe they're molting into final instar the caterpillars of our street tiger moths. All right, so. Um, they're pretty cool. They've got this black fuzz. They've got orange, bright orange, reddish, little hair follicles down several lines on their body, which is pretty cool. Um, they're start this, that guy's, 
that guy's full grown. I mean, I mean, he's he's mowing down on this grass blade here, and you can see that the fat content's growing on him. He's super healthy, and I'm expecting him to um, maybe start pupating soon. I don't know. Hopefully, look at that dude. So the actual caterpillar is gray. It's just the hairs are black and orange. But he's just mowing down on this on this grass blade, guys. They love grass. Uh, Ricky was raising them on, I gave Ricky some. He's raising them on three different types of grass. So just the grasses that he finds out in his, on his, in his front yard, St. Augustine grass, like weed, weedy grasses, they eat all of it. So pretty easy bug to raise, uh, which is pretty cool. And, um, you know, I'm enjoying these bugs now because they're, they're really easy. I've got plenty of this real tall, thick bladed grass right down the street from my house. I can get as much of it as I want. And they're starting to grow considerably larger and they're pretty cool to look at. So um, I've got probably 20 of them in this little six quart container and are, you know, they're doing, they're doing just fine. Um, I, all you gotta do is just jam enough food in there and keep their container clean and they're super easy to raise. So I'm happy with that. So guys, uh, I'll let you know when they start to pupate and I'll show you the rest of the life cycle. And there it is. All right, guys, there it is. The streaked tussock moth emerged from its chrysalis. And we've got probably 15 or 20 more where this comes from. This is just the first. This looks like a male specimen. Um, they're, they're not a whole lot to them. They're kind of, kind of drab. They'll blend in a lot really well with any type of dead dead leaves or twigs or something like that um but they call them the streaked tussock moth because of these black streaks here on the forewings yep. okay. all right the long streaked tussock moth um we reared a, a number of them and got several specimens that we're just going to save for vouchers and now we're going to take these guys off the board and show you what the fresh fresh mounted spe uh like freshly mounted specimen looks like of the streaked tussock moth. And, you know, it's, these are cool bugs. They used to live in South Florida, which I'm sure they still do because they only, they feed on grass. But I haven't seen one of these in at least 25 years in South Florida. So that's why it was kind of cool. When we got the female, I was like, you know what? Let's try to breed this thing. And we did. And now we've got fresh specimens. So here we are, guys. Streaked tussock moth. That's what they look like fresh. That's a female right there. You can tell by the, the antenna with no fuzz. And I'll show you a male. That one's got an antenna with fuzz. Um, the Arcteas, that's how you tell the difference. So, uh, streaked tussock moth, long streaked tussock moth. They get the name from the, that long brown band on the forewing. And that is about it. So it's kind of a nondescript moth. Just kind of, kind of drab in color, but, uh, it's a cool one nonetheless. So guys, hope you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Please, that would be great. We got plenty more videos coming your way. I'm gonna get the rest of these guys off the board and into my display. Take care, guys.